Syria, a country at war with each other for the past two years, and it could possibly lead to an intervention by the U.S. military. Some Americans want to get involved either from a financial or military standpoint, some don't. Gina Panzeri from Belchertown is already involved in her own way. She volunteers with the Syrian American Medical Society, helping out Syrian refugees in Jordan. She was there in February and is planning another trip in November, but for now is here to talk to us about why this is so important for her. Gina, thank you so much for joining oh, me. Oh, thank you for having me today. So grateful. how did you get involved with SAMS as it's affectionately known, right? Yes, okay. correct. Um, going back now a little over a year and a half, I was looking for a way to volunteer with refugees. And that's not an easy thing to do. Uh, I contacted the UN High Commissioner for Refugees in Sweden and they said, you know, gave me a nice pat on the head, said, nice of you, but you know, that it's really too involved. It's too involved a process. So contacted the UN High Commissioner for Refugees in Washington, D.C., got the same answer. So then I thought, okay, it's time for me to search out some non-governmental organizations that, you know, really need help. And long story short, I came across the Syrian American Medical Society, found two of their board members, wrote them, and they said, great, what do you want to do? And they initially, what they really needed was donated medical supplies. So I believe it was last August, I started calling hospitals, um, anybody I could get my hands on in the medical field, started visiting uh, medical offices around me to get donated medical supplies. Uh, so my first opportunity to volunteer with refugees came in uh, November, Thanksgiving, a year ago. Um, there was a team of physicians going in uh, and they you know, said I could come along and they sort of, it, to me it was an introductory experience. You know, I think they were exposing me to Zatari, to uh, what SAMS does in Jordan, the immense job they have. I got to meet uh, Free Syrian Army fighters who were covering in a hospital. Uh, I got to visit uh, some people who were recovering from horrible situations. It must have been- It's horribly traumatic. It, it must have, that's the thing, it must have been so traumatic in one sense, but so inspiring in another sense. Yes. How was that visit? Well, first of all, I felt incredibly honored to, first of all, that Sam's trusted me because it's a very delicate situation. Uh, you know, the screening that goes on before you can get into Zatari under normal circumstances because they're worried about protecting the people from who they're running from. Um, so, you know, I felt very honored and uh, I felt equally honored and very surprised at how uh, the Syrians I met wanted their story told. I'm not sure why I was so surprised by that. If you think about it, when you go through a traumatic experience, you want people to know so something can change. But I truly was surprised. I had started a blog when I, just before I left last November, and it was for my family. It was so I didn't have to send emails and let them know I was safe, it, so I could concentrate on what I was doing. Before I got home, there were 2,000 hits. I was expecting 25. It's because people were interested. What do the Syrian people want everybody else to know? They want, to, they want the world to know what Bashar al-Assad and his regime is doing. They want people to know that it did not start out as a civil war. It started out as pe peaceful protests and then the government started shooting, sniping, bombing, raping, imprisoning, uh, torturing people. That's how the government responded to peaceful protests. And of course, it has morphed into a civil war. Uh, so that's first and foremost. I think they get insulted sometimes when they hear civil war because that's not how it started. They feel their experience was, is really minimized. Uh, and number two, they want help. They just want help. They want somebody to stop him killing innocent people, bombing hospitals, bombing schools. Just yesterday, um, a school in Raqqa was bombed by a plane. The only one that has planes is Assad. They can't blame that on the Free Syrian Army. 
And uh, I believe it was 19 children were killed and God knows how many more were injured. So they want people to know what's going on and they want help. When I asked a Free Syrian Army fighter last November, what does that help look like to you? They said, all we want is a no-fly zone. Stop him from being able to bomb us and it will be an even playing field. And of course, the international community has not seen fit to do anything. So they feel abandoned. Do they want U.S. intervention from the different fighters that you've talked to? Uh, initially, yes, uh, most definitely. Um, I, I can't tell you this se uh, second round since the chemical weapons because I haven't been in the country since February. What I can tell you is those people that I've spoken with and the doctors that I've spoken with are terribly disappointed terribly, terribly disappointed. Basically, the way they look at it is, oh, okay, so Bashar al-Assad can't use chemical we weapons to kill us. He can do everything else. To them, they don't see that it's progress, which it is. If, if we look at it from a diplomatic point of view, that is progress, but it doesn't stop saving lives. It, nothing's changed on the ground for them. Do you feel that the U.S. is morally responsible to stop this, to step in? Personally, I think the world is responsible. I think the United Nations Security Council is responsible. It's in their charter that this kind of thing cannot go on. But the Security Council, and again, my understanding of the politics of the situation is very minimal, so please take what I say with that understanding. But the Security Council is responsible to stop a leader from killing innocent people. That's in their charter. But because Russia and China are on the Security Council, nothing gets done. Or nothing got done, I should say, because with Russia helping with the chemical weapons deal, which I hold great skepticism about, because what is if Russia has been supporting Bashar al-Assad, which they have, they have Russian troops in, they have, they're supplying them with weapons and planes and mortars and anything else you can think of, what does, what does Russia have to gain by moving the uh, chemical weapons issue forward? I'm skeptical about what that means on the ground for everyday Syrians. Talk about everyday Syrians. Sam's can't, the Syrian American Medical Society, affectionately known as SAMS, of course, they don't go directly into Syria? They absolutely they... do. Okay. SAMS is one of the major non-political organizations, there are a few others, who have, in essence, created a medical underground in Syria. They've established and support field hospitals uh, around the country in rebel-held areas. Do they feel they're being targeted by Assad's absolutely. regime? Absolutely. There was a doctor killed last week. There was a hospital bombed. Doctors and nurses were killed. This was a, a, a hospital supported by the Syrian American Medical Society. What do you hope to accomplish? Do you feel that there will ever be peace? Do you feel as if there will be a good ending to this story? I guess I wish that humans cared about other human beings. Uh, that religion, that country boundaries, um, it didn't matter that politics, that resources didn't take precedent over human lives. Um, you know, this situation in Syria, you know, I've met children. I met a 12-year-old girl who was shot in the back. And, and she was shot in the back simply because they wanted to harass her. She's paralyzed from the waist down. What, why doesn't that matter to humanity? You know, I think if more human beings remembered uh, their humanity, this kind of stuff wouldn't carry on. I think someday that will happen. I'm a mediator by training, so I, I'm and an, you know, have endless hope, but something's got to shift. Our priorities need to shift. What was having the conversation with this girl that was shot in the back, what was her outlook on the situation, on life in general? Uh, she was very grateful, first of all, that uh, and this is also very overwhelming, I've heard time and time again, that Jordan took them in. You know, they had no place to go. They had no place to treat her. 
Um, she's a very shy, sweetest girl, beautiful, sweet. Um, I don't know how she deals with the horror of what happened. You know, basically her family and the whole street was called out into the street by Assad regime soldiers. And they were beating on women and children. I think they were looking for somebody. I, I didn't quite follow the whole story. Um, and then they were dismissed and told to go into their houses. And as they were going into their houses, they were shot. So, you know, she doesn't understand why nobody will do anything. You know what I mean? But yet she, you know, is a child and children are amazingly resilient. And uh, one of my friends donated an app book for her so that she could continue her studies, even though, you know, she's paralyzed from the waist down and can't always get out. And you're going back November 13th. November, you're going back to Jordan, and who knows who else you'll meet and what other story you'll be able to bring back. Exactly. Yep. Well, thank you so much for coming and well, telling Thank you for having story. me. Really appreciate it. Thank you.